Hi everyone, I'm Mary, one of your friendly PCC librarians. In this tutorial, we'll be discussing MLA citations. By the end of this video, we will learn why citations are used, when to use citations, and how to create citations following MLA 8th edition. Okay, let's jump in. Why are citations used? One reason is that citations give credit to the original author. Doing so means you are attributing ex existing research to its creator, and it helps in avoiding plagiarism. Another reason is that citations allow readers to look up the source on their own. For example, if you write a research paper with citations provided, then that means someone else reading your paper has enough information to look up those resources on their own. Okay, so when are citations used? Citations should be used when you are quoting. This means that if you borrow an exact quote from someone else's work, word for word, you need to cite where it came from. Citations should also be used when you are paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is when you take someone else's work and put it into your own words. Even though you aren't quoting something word for word, it is still borrowing someone else's idea. Therefore, it needs a citation. Citations should also be used when you are summarizing. Summarizing is when you take someone else's work, put it into your own words, and condense it into a summary. Similar to paraphrasing, even though you are not quoting a source word for word, it is still borrowing someone else's ideas, therefore it needs a citation for where it came from. Now that we've discussed why and when to use citations, let's look at how to create them. The first step is to start with the MLA citation format that matches the type of resource you are citing. In other words, if you are citing a book, then you will need to follow the book citation format. If you're citing an article, then you would need to follow the article citation format. Let's review the book format as an example. Notice that it is made up of different elements, such as an author's last name, their first name, the title of the book, the publisher, and year. These are the pieces of information about the book that you will need to gather and then plug into the format following the same order and punctuation. Here is an example of a book citation with pieces plugged in. As you can see, it includes an author's name, title of the book, publisher, and year. Be sure to follow things like punctuation and when italics are used when writing your citations. Now let's look at an article format. Notice that there are more elements in the article format than the book format. Gather as many of the elements as you can, and if there is no information provided for a certain element, that's okay. Not all resources you cite will have each of the elements, so plug in the pieces that are available to you and skip the ones where no information is given. Here is an example of an article citation with the pieces plugged in. As you can see, it includes an author's name, title of an article, title of the periodical, volume number, date, page numbers, name of the database, and the web address. Again, be sure to follow things like punctuation and when italics and quotation marks are used. Remember, PCC Library is here to help. On the library homepage are helpful resources to help with your research, including the Citing Sources button, which has citation formats, sample citations, and even a sample works cited page. Also on the library homepage is the Ask a Librarian button, which takes users to all the different ways to get assistance from PCC Library, including chat, email, and even video conferencing. Thanks for watching!